What is up my dudes, it's Pac-Man here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video that I think a lot of you want. Some tips on how to improve your solo queue game. In some of my most recent videos, you guys have been asking for tips on how to have a better solo queue experience and that's exactly what you're going to get. So kick back, smash that like button, hit subscribe and enjoy the video. So to start off the video, I just wanted to go through why people would play solo queue. Um, and the short answer to that question is that people will play solo queue for different reasons. Some people play because they may not have a team to play with, uh, or maybe their team isn't online but they still want to play. Uh, I personally have always played solo queue as I believe that it adds an extra layer of skill to my game. It allows me to be more self-sufficient, not relying on the support of my team, which in turn allows me to be a better, more rounded player when I am playing with my team. Whatever the reason is, we all have a reason from time to time to play solo queue. So with that being said, what can we do to find more success when doing so? So quick disclaimer, if the only thing you care about is your rank, I definitely wouldn't recommend playing too much solo queue. You're going to have much better success in increasing your rank by playing with the same team consistently. I personally don't really care too much about what my rank is, I care about improvement. And like I said before, there are definitely some benefits that come with playing solo. With time, your rank will balance out to where you should be, so don't get too focused on temporarily deranking. Focus on improvement and the rank will come. I think one of the most important factors in being successful at solo queue comes down to being adaptable. When you're playing in a squad, it's very easy to attack a bomb site in a specific way that you know works or to set up a site the way you like it. However, you have to remember when you're playing in solo queue, everyone's going to have their own style. So be adaptable to that. Don't get angry if people aren't playing the same way your team does. Go with it and try to make it work. Feel free to make suggestions or at times lead, but don't get angry and quiet if your team isn't responding well. This is also important for operator selection. I always find that allowing the other players to pick their operators that they want and filling in the gaps works best. Just remember, be adaptable to the environment um, and try and fit into the playstyle of your makeshift squad. You're gonna find more success. Another huge, huge, huge one is droning. When you're playing by yourself, you're really going to struggle to find people who are willing to drone you through buildings, making call outs along the way as a good team should. So to fill in that gap, you need to drone yourself through. Use your drone and prep phase to help you get inside the building at the beginning of the round, and every time you take some area of the map, continue to use that drone to help you move forward. Once that drone is gone, throw your second and continue as before. This one tip is going to help you immensely if you do it consistently. Your teammates are highly unlikely to drone you in, but that doesn't mean you just shouldn't drone. You have to do it all on your lonesome when you're playing solo queue, so you better get used to it. Some of you guys might hate this next part, but if you want to win more solo queue ranked games, you're going to have to communicate. Like I mentioned before, during the attack rounds you should be droning yourself forward as much as possible, but it will also help your team out so much uh, if you're communicating what you're doing as you go. Throw out some suggestions about where to push forward. Make sure not only to call out where you see enemies, but also when you don't. Letting your teammates know what parts of the map are clear is almost just as important as letting them know which parts are not clear. This can be hard in solo queue when you get paired with some toxic teammates uh, who don't really care about what you're saying, um, and unfortunately that's just the way it goes in solo queue. This is going to happen from time to time. But stick with it, communicate as often and as much as you can to help guide your team through to a victory. Quick tip on this, if you do come up against toxic teammates, don't retaliate, just mute them and continue to communicate with the rest of the team. Winning and improving are heavily reliant on your mindset. One of the most important factors of a good mindset is staying positive. I know this can be tough when you've lost a few games in a row, or your teammates are being toxic, or maybe you're just not playing the best. But maintaining a really positive mindset uh, is a super good way to stay consistent in-game. Negativity spreads faster than positivity, so if you go into a game with a negative outlook uh, and that shows through the way that you're communicating or acting, it's going to spread. Stay positive and don't trash people when they make a mistake. When someone makes a mistake, the difference between saying something like, come on man, what are you doing? Um, and unlucky bro, good effort, can be the difference between winning and losing. This one, it's pretty relevant to life outside of Siege 2. Never be toxic and spread positivity. It goes a long way. So lastly, I wanted to really look at something I touched on before, which is operator selection. You want to make sure that you're filling in gaps for your team, like bringing smoke if no one else has it, or soft breach, or hard breach, whatever's going to benefit your team the most. With that being said, I highly suggest bringing operators that are going to allow you to be self-sufficient on your own. 
Um, operators like Zofia, Thatcher, Thermite, or Nomad on attack, um, or operators like Doc, Jaeger, Valk, or Maestro on defense. There are plenty of operators to choose from, but ideally you should be looking to be both self-sufficient and to fill in gaps for your team. So the final thing I wanted to touch on guys is solo queue is called solo queue for a reason. It's because you're on your own. All the tips I gave you before, like communicating, staying positive and being adaptable are super helpful and they will help you win games, especially if you do them consistently. But in the end of the day, just like the tip I gave you on droning, you can't rely on your teammates too much when you're playing solo. So if you have someone that's being toxic in game, mute them and focus on you and your teammates who are cooperating and uh, you're going to find more success in the long run. So there you have it guys, hopefully by implementing some of these things you can find more success in your solo queue games and win more matches. Solo queue can be a really really good resource for you to learn and improve, but it can also turn sour really quick. So remember, if all you care about is your rank, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're looking to improve, don't be toxic, no blaming, remember to communicate and focus on the things that you can impact, not what you can't. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, turn on that notification bell, it really helps out more than you could know. New videos like this every single Monday, every single Wednesday and every single Friday. Uh, so with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.